Do you know what time it is? My goodness, it's very exciting. What we're about to do is learn that power series can be differentiated and integrated. And my advice to you is the same advice I've been giving to my students for years, which I've enumerated right here. These wise words are always, always, always expand first. Expansion is your friend. So when dealing with integration and differentiation of power series, it's important to expand them out the first few terms maybe the nth term, depends on what the problem calls for. And the second piece of advice is power series are just polynomials, dude. What do I mean by that? They're the simplest of functions. They just go on forever. You'll see what I mean right now. So we're asked to write the first three non-zero terms and the general term for the power series expansion of f prime of x, this being f of x, an infinitely long polynomial. Then we're asked to find the interval of convergence of f of x and f prime of x as well. Let's do it. So. The reason why I want you to expand every time is when you do that, you're going to see that this is a pretty harmless polynomial. So we'll plug in 0, x to the 0 is 1, plus x to the 1 is x, plus x to the 2 is x squared, plus, and then we're asked for the first three non-zero terms, I'll go out to x cubed because the derivative will cancel out that one, plus dot 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 plus x to the n, and then it keeps on going on and on. So that's your expanded form of this. It's equivalent to that, whether you write it like this or like that these two infinite sums are equivalent. So what we're asked to do is write the first three non-zero terms of f prime. So how do we find f prime? Well, f prime of x is the derivative of this. Treat it like a polynomial. What's the derivative of 1? It's 0. The derivative of x? 1. The derivative of x squared? 2x. Yeah, it's that easy. It seems daunting at first until you expand it. Uh, the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared plus dot 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 plus and now we're going to take the derivative of x to the n which is n times x to the n minus one plus dot 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 and that is our answer the first three one two three non-zero terms and the general term or the nth term now what we're going to do is we're going to find the interval of convergence notice that this is a geometric series right the common ratio is x so i'll say that r equals x Therefore, we've got that the absolute value of r, which is equal to the absolute value of x, is less than 1. So that means the absolute value of x being less than 1 will allow us to figure out our interval, which is going to be between negative 1 and 1. And because it's geometric, we don't have to at all check our endpoints. I'll say by geo series, and that can be it. Very nice. So now, that's our interval of convergence. Uh, if we were asked for the radius of convergence, it would be 1, but we're not. So here's our interval of convergence right there. So what's the interval of convergence for the derivative function? Well, let's check that out now. So that would be, well, unfortunately, this is no longer geometric, so I'm going to have to use the ratio test. So that would be the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the n plus first term, that'd be n plus 1, times x to the n plus 1 minus 1, is x to the n. n plus 1, subtracting 1, leaves you with just n. And I'll put that over the nth term, which is this. n and x to the n minus 1. And all of that needs to be less than 1. Now, the limit as n goes to infinity of the n part goes to 1. n plus 1 over n, that value right there goes to 1. And you're left with x to the n over x to the n minus 1. There's one fewer x in the denominator, so all that goes away. And lo and behold, you're left with the absolute value of x is less than 1. The very same endpoints. So now the question is, do we converge or diverge at the endpoints? Now I'm going to do this pretty informally because it's not the main part of what we're going over here. But if I plug negative 1 or positive 1 into this, I get either an alternation of n or 1 times n. But either way, you're going to get negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n, or just x to the n minus 1. Sorry, not x to the n minus 1, just n. Either way, that's what happens when you plug in those endpoints. And so what that means is, if we take the nth term divergence test, both of these will diverge. You're not going to go to 0 with either of these terms if we go to infinity. So this is the interval of convergence again. Now, why does that make sense? Well, let's think about it. The interval of convergence of f of x and f prime of x, well, huh. Well, the interval of convergence is the x values over which this thing converges as well as its derivative. This is just an infinitely long polynomial, and we're saying that it only converges here to here. 
So it would make sense that the place where its slopes will occur, its tangent lines, will be on that same interval as well. That's it. So you can expect that anytime you're asked for the interval of convergence for the derivative, or for that matter, the integral of a function, a power series, the endpoints, right, those bounds are going to match with the bounds, no matter if it's f, f prime, or the integral of f, no matter what. You do still need to check the endpoints. I think that's pretty cool. You're very rarely asked about that. More so, the focus here is taking the derivative or the integral. And here we go, taking an integral. Let's rock and roll. So it says, find the integral of f of x and its interval of convergence. OK, well, again, expand this thing out. That's what we saw before. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot, 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 x to the n plus dot, dot, dot. Now, from here, we will take a derivative. So that's going to be f prime. Ooh, no, we're not going to take a derivative. Just kidding. We're going to take the integral. Just seeing if you're on your toes. All right, so we're going to take the integral of this. So the integral of f of x dx is the same as taking the integral of this. The integral of 1 is just x. The integral of x is x squared over 2. Remember, it's just a polynomial, dude. We expand it out and treat it like a polynomial. Plus, the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. Um, and we're going to just keep it to the first three non-zero terms in the general term like before, plus dot, dot, dot. Plus, you add 1 to the exponent. n is like a constant, so we add 1 to it and divide by that new exponent that we get. Um, and then technically, I guess it would be plus c after all of this is said and done. So you'd have plus some kind of constant at the end of it of integration. Some professors and teachers want that. Others don't care. Um, you can just leave it like this. I'm fine with that. Now, what is its interval of convergence? Well, again, we know that it's going to be between negative 1 and 1, as stated in the previous slide. But we're going to test our endpoints. So if I plug in negative 1 into this. So we'll take that. We'll plug in negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. An interesting thing happens. We're actually going to converge at hmm, this kind of series here at negative 1. How do I know that? It's an alternating series. It's alternating harmonic. So this one converges, whereas n equals, so I'll put this converges, n equals 0 to infinity of, and we're taking this and we're plugging in 1, 1 to the n plus 1 is just 1 over n plus 1. This diverges. It's a diverging harmonic series. Um, or you could say it's a diverging, well, compared to a p series with limit comparison, if you really want to get formal. But it diverges. So we actually do include that left-hand endpoint here. So we could integrate it all the way to n, including negative 1, but not include 1. Very cool stuff. All right, so I've got one more slide for you in this video, and it's, I think it's so rad. Let's do it together. It says, write the first four non-zero terms in the general term for the Maclaurin series for g of x equals e to the x. So this is one of those that, again, if you haven't memorized it already, you got to have it down. g of x equals e to the x, which is equal to, now let's take a look at this. We know it's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. And they said the first four non-zero terms, they, it's my problem. So I said the first four non-zero terms, that's this, plus the general term. That's x to the n over n factorial. A reminder that n is just some constant, that's all. So this says find the first four non-zero terms and the general term for the Maclaurin series for g prime of x. What do you notice? Why does it make sense? So the derivative, again, treat this like it is a polynomial. Take the derivative of 1, that's 0. The derivative of x, 1. The derivative of this, watch what happens. 2 factorial is just chilling, right? It is just a constant. Plus 3x squared over 3 factorial. Huh. You might be like, I don't really see what's happening here. Now, the next term would be x to the fourth. I'll put that one in there. We would have had x to the fourth over 4 factorial as that next term, and we need the first four non zero terms. So I take the derivative of that 4x cubed over 4 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Remember, n is just some constant coefficient, so that's n, or will be a constant coefficient, n times x to the n minus 1. Multiply and subtract by 1, that's the power rule, divided by n factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Now, that's the derivative. You could leave it like that on the BC exam. A lot of teachers might want you to simplify it. Let's do that here. So g prime of x is equal to 1 plus, well, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So the 2's cancel, leaving you with x over 1. 
3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. The 3s will divide out, leaving you with 2 times 1, or 2 factorial. Wait a second. Hold on. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 4s are going to cancel out, leaving you with x cubed over 3 factorial. Plus n, n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial. Wait a second. The n's cancel out, and you're left with x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. And it keeps on going on like that. Despite the fact that there's the n minus 1 here, this is going out to infinity. So this pattern is the same exact pattern as this. This is equivalent to that. It is literally equal to, I should say, e to the x. It is the same exact pattern, which we know to be true. It makes sense because what's the derivative of e to the x? It's e to the x. Isn't that cool? So of course the power series should bear out what we already know to be true, that its derivative is equal to the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. That's rad. You know what else is rad? What's well, coming up in the next video. I'll see you there. Until then, peace.